The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Ryan Hoppy and Fastest. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Alessia, I'm feeling really good right now. Here we are. I'm not tired, though. I'm not totally worn out. I'm wide awake recording this happy hour with you, Alessia. Wide awake. I just took a Klonopin. I take Klonopin for my ADHD. Do you? And I was so anxious, yes, that I just went to the corner. That's what I did when I got on my feed real quick. I got some Klonopin. I just popped one. I feel amazing. I feel off the wall. Makes me so happy. <laughs> How are you? Life seems crazy for you right now. I feel like this has been the crazy week to just be alive. I have single people problems, like a lot of production I have to do in radio and like things that took me like three hours and I worked from 3.45 till about noon today and this is my first time sitting down. So I might take a deep breath because we record two shows a week. <laughs> Meditate. We record two shows a week, and this week it was only one because you're a hardworking single mother and you have a lot going on. So what the hell was going on in the life of Alessia while I sit back here and take a deep breath? I feel like this is just my time to unwind and let loose, and I don't even want to open that up. And for the record, I do not endorse Klonopin. I am more natural, so but, oh, I, but I support you I get it way. prescribed. I'm not, going, <laughs> I'm not going to some guy named Lenny in Pinellas Park. Big farm. Trust me, I like natural too, though. Natural yeah. is good. Yeah, like certain things we aren't going to talk about. Yeah, just being natural. I mean, the natural plant is a beautiful thing. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. So what the hell happened with you this week? It's been crazy. You know, uh, first of all, holiday season, just moved into a new place, unboxing, organizing, all the things, and being a parent, and you guys know how it is. When it rains, it pours. So as I'm running around doing all the things I need to do, my littlest gets sick. You parents know how it is. It comes at the worst time. The funniest thing happened today that is a first. My child at school, I got a call from the office that I needed to bring her an extra sock. That that's new. So I ran over to her school, perfect timing, to bring her a sock. Okay. What's that moment like where, first, what are you doing when you get the call about the sock? What are you doing at that exact moment? <laughs> Trying to make soup for my sick little two-year-old. What is it like being a parent where you're always on edge almost that something's going to happen? Like you're making soup for your other kid are you ever on eggshells where whenever you're doing any task, you're like, at any point, something could happen with my kid? Does that go through your mind? Oh my gosh, all the time. And on top of that today, then I got a call that I had to go pick up our cats. And it was like one thing after another. It's it's a hot mess, but it's okay. Here we are. And I actually put Christmas decorations up um, at our new place, which was a first. We've always lived in apartments. So having a house is cool. I got to decorate outside. It was nice. I need to decorate this place because I do like Christmas and it's already December 25th, it feels like. Yeah. So I feel like I want to have a little bit of Christmas in my life before Christmas is over with. Because I get jealous of everybody that like decorates the hell out of their house. Now with the obnoxious things in your front yard, like inside the house when it's decorated, I have an appreciation for that. And for the first 29 years of my life, I haven't done that. And I really think when I get paid tomorrow... I'm going to invest in something to make this place a little more Christmassy because it goes by and then who even that. likes the first few months of the year? Who likes February or January? Do you like it? I'm not a big fan. I feel like they end up going by so fast. Like those are the months that fly. All the months kind of fly. When it comes to Christmas decorations, somehow I spent $300 at Target yesterday on lights and extension cords and I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. And then I bought a train that broke like within minutes that I needed. 300 bucks at Target? When I leave paying 86.59, I feel like the world's ending. <laughs> $300. I'm having buyer's remorse. I am definitely, and I had so many boxes to unpack and organize from our move, but I decided to put that on hold and decorate, which uh, was a temporary Band-Aid. That's what happened. Well, you know what's very weird about creating a show 
is I want this show to be on the radio. I believe this show would take over Morning Drive and be number one, 18 to 34 and 25, 54 men, specifically women. I was looking at the Spotify numbers and adding you, I'm not going to sit here and pat myself on the back because a lot of radio shows will only read the positive emails they get for the first 20 minutes of their show and none of the negative ones and the show members separated so that the host doesn't see the negative ones. I'm not going to do that here and read off all the compliments I got. But my goodness, I'm going to focus on the good emails in this pile. Everybody likes Alessia. I don't know why I didn't add you as a co-host six, seven years ago. It was crazy. I had people reaching out to me from Illinois. It was like a big moment in my life. I added a female co-host. I've been through like seven. And you were saying you're f- everybody you knew was listening. It's crazy. For the first time, I'm speechless. And I love looking into Ryan's eyes as he tells me all the good things. And I'm so happy to be a part of it. And listeners, I'm here to spread joy and cheer and be... And I'm very negative. And that's what I'm here (laughs) to bring everything down. I'm over here like complaining about my my life this week. But that's what the first uh, little bit of the show is about. Everybody wants to complain. I went to an event with The Hub. Reagan Weiss has this amazing group on Facebook called The Hub. And they promote other people within Newport Ritchie, small businesses, whatnot. And I went to a Newport Ritchie bar and went to a luncheon and passed out business cards and talked about my website, podcastmanifest.com and our podcast. And that's what you got to do sometimes. I had an epiphany that when you do the same thing over and over again, I'm the first one to to say this. When you do the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. It just seems like things are changing now, but I feel more pressure because of it. I feel like I have no time to breathe. Now that I have so much good in my life, no one told me that having good in my life meant I was going to have no free time. I kind of miss having bad in my life because then I was able to lay around all day and have nothing to do. It's the American rat race, people. It really is a thing. And last year, if you listen to our first episode, you found out that I lived in Spain with my family. I was over there teaching. And wow, what a cultural difference. I mean, everyone over there was telling me to chill out because I was constantly feeling the need to run around and do something to be productive. And their lifestyle over there is just about relaxing, which we need to implement a little bit here, right? Because I don't know how to relax. I don't know how to relax either. And I don't think I'll ever be able to relax. And I'm fine with that. Really? Are you? You know where I went last week that was very relaxing but awful? As a mother, when you go out shopping, have you ever been to Sprouts? No, but I've seen it and I need to go. It is. (laughs) You would like Sprouts. I would love Sprouts. I've heard that actually. so overpriced for the quantity they give you. So from my old radio job, I actually had a gift card for 100 bucks to go there. And I was like, you know what? I don't care that it's made of plants and beans. I'll take some chicken nuggets and I'll take burgers. So I went on a shopping spree. And the amount of food that I got for a hundred dollars at Sprouts, you would have thought that it was twenty bucks. It was awful. It was very little. Yeah. And the portions, I don't know. Do vegans not want a lot of like calories or whatever? (laughs) Because the burgers, the fake burgers, and all the meat you get. At Sprouts, at least if the price is going to be more, at least have it be more filling. I ate like three of the burgers today and I'm hungry as hell. Like, I don't know if you know any people that are vegan or vegetarian or whatever, but are they just hungry all day? Because when I went to Sprouts, I went, I am a proud meat eater. They're hungry and they're loaded. They're hungry and they're loaded. I can't shop. Like I, my go-to is Earth Origins and Rolling Oats here in St. Pete. Shout out to them. But I end up spending uh, $150 on like two items. It's so, so expensive. But then do you slightly feel good that you're buying all natural and organic and this and that? But here we go back to Europe, back to Spain. You're going to hear me drop this a lot. When I was over there, there's not as many chemicals and pesticides and crap that they put into the food. So you don't have to worry as much and it's more affordable. I've been meaning to ask, what is your ethnic ethnicity? Italian. 
I wasn't sure. I was, I had like a hundred guesses. I could be anything, right? Whoops. No, literally. <laughs> yeah. My parents are from Italy. My dad was born in Canada. Most of my family lives in Toronto now. So I'm dual citizenship. I am Canadian too. Um, but yeah, my family comes from Italy and I just always had this fascination with Spain. So I ended up moving there, but. Well, you know, what's funny is I feel like I've never been to Canada. I do want to go to Toronto, but I feel like people don't talk about how big Toronto is. Am I correct? It's huge and it's a beautiful city. I mean, Canada's just gorgeous. Yeah. I've never been there. I have obviously know that uh, Aubrey's from there. Drake, that's his real name. I don't know if you're aware of that. His real name is Aubrey. I had a, um, a cousin in Canada who used to work with him when he was in Degrassi. Oh, when he was in the wheelchair. What a weird transition that is. Out of any pop culture transition ever, Drake going from the weird kid on that show to all of a sudden being one of the biggest rappers ever. I, I don't think anybody on set when that show was being made 15, 20 years ago was like, he's going to have a hundred hits. But you know what? That role, if it came out now in 2022, would he be the weird kid or would he be the kid that needs to be there? Like the one- I never watched an episode. I can't tell you. I've seen a little bit of it. There's a weird vibe with shows in Canada. The acting is just a little <laughs> different. It's human, but there's just a way that they film shows in Canada that's different. I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of comedians have come from Canada, though. Haven't you Jim that? Carrey. Yeah. Mike Celine Myers. Dion. Isn't Mike Myers? Celine yeah. <laughs> Bless her heart. I heard she was just diagnosed with something. I know. I saw that. was awful. Yeah. She's... Uh, listen... I can belt out some Celine Dion in the morning. Y'all don't even know. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Do you ever have those friends that call you out when things are getting really pathetic? Like when things are getting really bad, like, have you ever gone to your barber? I know you don't go to a barber, but have you ever gone and gotten a haircut and your friends are like, why the hell? specifically the person cutting your hair says, why the hell am I giving you a haircut and you're not looking fresh? Have you ever had that where somebody has commented on how you looked on your social media? The last bad comment I got. Yeah. Actually, I'm not going to go there, but okay. let's talk about your hair. It looks great. Thank you. <laughs> so I went to Rich Keeley. He is the best barber in all the Bay Area, richkbarber.com. I adore Rich Keeley. I've known him for years now. But usually every time I go, I've probably seen him 12 months in a year times two. I've probably been there 27 times. Every month I get a haircut. And people that are sh that have short hair or that are bald go, oh, you get a haircut. Yeah, I have nice hair. Shut up. But literally... Rich and I would always have this bond the last 27 times I've gone. We just hang out. He's talking about the girl he's dating. I'm That's correct math. Thank you. Well, guess what? I go in there and he looks me in the eyes. He's trying to keep you in check. He looks me in the eyes and goes, what is going on? And I went, what are you talking about, Rich? And he goes, why are you not putting product in your hair? He goes, you're posing with famous people at work and your hair looks all messy. And he, he, he called me out. I'm glad he did. And you can go to any other place and get an average haircut. But when you go to Rich Keeley, you're going to get life advice. Yeah, that's what you need. He called me out hard. I even mentioned it in my post. When you go to richkbarber.com and sign up, he's going to call you out. And it was very necessary. Like, I think, it's, I think it is necessary. And you should tip extra for that. I did. For all the info, you go to richkbarber.com and you sign up for an appointment. Because here's the thing is you might not get the haircut as soon as you want because he gets booked up fast. So a lot of times people are going to go, oh, I'm going to go to great clubs. Don't. I'm going to go to sport clubs. Don't. I'm going to go to Lady Jane's because I want to cheat on my wife. Don't. If you go to richkbarber.com and you have to wait a few days on the waiting list, it doesn't matter because there's going to be openings. You sign up for the waiting list. And you're getting life advice. And you're going to get the best haircut ever. Like who cares if you have to wait three or four more days? When that haircut comes in and you look fresh, you're going to be feeling real good about yourself because there's no worse feeling than going to one of those places where you don't have that connection with the barber and the haircut looks awful and they know they did an awful job. And they're like, do you like the haircut? And you're like, sure, man. 
That doesn't happen. When you go to richkbarber.com and when you tell him I sent you, man, he'll tell you a lot about me. Happy hour. Happy hour. It's time to turn Hoppy on. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Listen to Hoppy Hour at any time, anywhere. Search Hoppy Radio on all major streaming platforms. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet that the other stations are tuned in to. Does this music bring back memories? Do you remember this? Are we on MTV Crips? Close, not at all. American Idol? Yeah! Wow. Simon Cowell's in the news. I knew it was in there somewhere. Oh my God. That show was so fake and so scripted, it's ridiculous when you think about tax now or go on MySpace and vote and... You know it was all predetermined. The fact, too. The warning from the F- Oops. Go on. The fact, too, that it was written and some of the things, if you listen to clips from way back when, that are not acceptable to say now, were totally written into their scripts then, and it blows my mind. But let's get to Simon. So people are wondering what the hell is going on with the appearance of Simon Cowell, which you know karma probably hit him up recently because he ran his mouth about everybody for so long a social media post that has people asking is that really simon cowell something sure looks different about simon cowell in a new video promoting britain's got talent i always say on this show two or three minutes can change your life i love how he's trying to be nice now for 20 years he was a complete housewife and now he's like this can change your life being on this show that's very predetermined yep yep i actually have a cousin in toronto canada who was um the buzzer sofia vergara hit the buzzer for her on um give me the america's got talent america's got talent and simon was there too we'll have to pull up that clip and it has. And maybe this time it's going to be you. Fans were quick to point out his smoothed out complexion and bleach whitened teeth. So- How would you describe the new look of Simon Cowell for people that are listening to this? The thing is, he has a team of people that <laughs> constantly focus on his appearance from his face, hair to his wardrobe. And I'm not understanding this at all. He I will take like a, a picture of it. Part. I'm going to actually make this. I'm going to take this picture right here. I'm going to make this the cover of the podcast so everybody listening feels like they know what Simon looks like too. That's what we're going to do because not everybody's going to go to Air Ryan Happy Radio on social media. Right. But if you have that as the cover of the podcast, which we're going to do, let us know what the hell do you think is going on with Simon Cowell? Is it like a, you know what? Maybe he was sick and his makeup crew just like... Went a little intense. Went a little you know what heavy. I think it looks like? When you look at the lips and like the facial hair, it looks- his lips done? I, maybe, or he might've got his lips pushed in last night and in that way, I mean, by being punched in the face at he, a pub. He, he seems looks, like he got beat up. He looks like he got stung by a bee. Oh, Simon. Got and it. he also, you're right. Like lately he's been trying to play the nice card. And by lately, I mean the last few years. And I think that is his true <laughs> self because that mean, who told him to be mean? That's the person we need to find. The 2000s told him to be mean. <laughs> Every pop culture from 20 years ago, all the jokes, family guy, whatever, all of the shows. I don't know what it was. Yeah. It was so mean back then. It was, but it was fun. That was the satire. That was what was funny. That was what was entertaining. And right. now it's, yep. So the, the following video that I'm about to play does not represent Ryan Hoppy or Alessia Calandra. I said your last name, correct? Yes. Here are some of the best insults from over the years with Simon Cowell. Oh, geez. It says here you work as a wedding singer. I was. <laughs> How many ended in divorce? <laughs> if I were you, I'd phone up the war department, <laughs> volunteer your services, because you've just invented a new form of torture. Yeah. I'll give you a tip for future auditions. Don't. I don't mean to be unkind, but you have one of the worst singing voices possibly in Miami. How has he not been canceled? I'm not saying he deserves to be. You know who is 
quite possibly never going to get canceled as well as Simon Cowell is Jimmy Kimmel. How the hell does the man show, which is a funny show in some portions, in some portions it is so cringeworthy and so sexist. How the hell has Jimmy Kimmel not been canceled? Really? You he think must Jimmy have, Kimmel? You think he's sexist? Do you ha- get that from him? Have you not heard of the man show? No, I only watch Jimmy I, Kimmel live. What am I missing? Hello. Sing I'm going to have time. you do the research because I don't even want to. Yeah. You're not going to be able to watch two seconds of the man show. Dang. He did a show in the 90s. It was the man show with him and this guy named Adam. Wow, you've never heard of them. See, 90s, 2000s, it just trickled on. the. Uh, well, I'm going to see how offended you can get by this because I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, this this was the man show. Oh. Right here. <laughs> You'll never look at Jimmy Kimmel the same. Let me skip to the middle here. And then, and, and then we, we wonder. Those questions and more as we attempt to uncover the mystery of woman. Look at how fat Jimmy Kimmel is too. I kind of like him that way. And also, this is why men are the way they are right now. If you were born in the 90s. <laughs> and this was on TV. And this is what you were consuming. Like, no, what, no wonder I am single. Like, truly, the music, the television, all of it, this is what they grew up with. And sorry, guys. Like, honestly, this, now I get it. But Jimmy has a new act, too, then. That South Park family guy. I mean, family guy was sexist, too. It's absolutely nuts to think about the music I was consuming. You want to know what's crazy about lyrics from the 2000s when you go back and you listen you're only like two or three years older than me so you were we're in the same era like i relate to you much more than i relate to somebody that's like three or four years younger than me like i much more relate with millennials because i'm a millennial and the fact that we were grinding at school dances to usher and i went to a catholic school Oh, so it was even crazier because that's that's where the girls were fun. I didn't know anything about it. But I, oh my God, those parties are playing Yeah by Usher. They're playing Lil Wayne. What the hell did our teachers have to go through watching us grind like little, like whatever the word you want to do to describe that act? Oh, we yeah. were literally, imagine seeing a 13 year old now doing that Wait, at a question, school dance. What? is the dancing like now i don't even know like what's the popular they're on their phone doing tiktok dances oh i'm telling you is that it no i literally think they're probably filming innocent tiktok dances i get this and if you are a gen z or 856-49-HOPPY message us on the uh, talkback feature on the iheart radio app what do you do at school dances? Because for us, we were, I'm going to say it, a bunch of sluts. We, we, everybody, every gender, wow. we were so, cr- were we not? No, you know, not that it you was say nuts. This. It was absolutely nuts. I was looking up an old nightclub that was down a block from where I grew up in Illinois, and I looked it up on Google, and there was an article from 15 years ago talking about 13 year olds sneaking into the nightclub to go to a foam party. That is the most 2008 headline. And I think that's because it was pre-social media. So there was no proof that you're out in eighth grade going crazy. Okay. You just opened up a whole can I was not prepared for. What can did I open? Things are just swirling in my (laughs) mind. And I am here to do that. I conduct the show. That's why I did it. Because I knew me and you grew up in the same era. I do have to admit something. Like, let's just have story time. Okay. So I was in high school. So older than middle school. Obviously, that's what high school means. Yes. Um, Okay. So I had my car. A few of my friends got in. We went to Orlando for the night from St. Pete and we went to this place called, oh my gosh, I think it was called Pleasure Island. In Hell Orlando. yeah. And <laughs> it was basically Disney or Universal's version of like the adult nightclubs. And we were in high school. We decided to get a hotel room. Don't ask us how we landed that. Stayed at the Marriott and then tried to sneak into these like Orlando nightclubs. My parents had no idea and now they will know after they listen to this. And I drove back to Tampa without them knowing I was even in Orlando, but then in Tampa, got a ticket before I got on the Howard Franklin heading back to St. Pete. So. Okay. 
I was the king at sneaking into underage drinking parties. I never once got the invite, hey, add Hoppy to the list. No one was doing that, but I always knew somebody on the list who could sneak me into the party. And when everybody's drunk as hell at age 17, they're like, oh, whatever, Ryan's here, who cares? Kind of like how I got into radio. So literally when I was at the party, I went to maybe 10 parties in my life growing up. I went to a lot of high school parties and I was the king of knowing when to leave. You know when it was time to leave the underage drinking party? We're from different parts of America, so you gotta remember, you would walk home drunk because we weren't driving. We literally were not driving because we actually couldn't drive. We didn't have our license or permit. You know when it was time to go home? So when you got the uh, quarterback and the cheerleader hooking up in the bedroom, you got the one kid throwing up in the bathroom, you got people doing shots, EDM music's playing on in the kitchen. And when you felt like the neighbors could hear the next door, the neighbors next door could hear what was going on next door, that's when it was time to leave, was when it was so loud at the party that you go, okay, it's time to leave. Every time I left, the cops always came within five minutes. And everybody would be, we would be in class on Monday morning. And I don't think I don't think kids have that problem now. Or actually, no, excuse yeah. me. I think they have it worse because if they're on social media posting that they're at someone's house at a house party, had that happened to us, we would have been caught so much sooner because you know the parents are creeping on their socials. There were literally parties that I don't think parents, they might not know how crazy it was because everybody was organized, especially if you went to a... Every time you went to a girl's house and the party was at a girl's house, when the party was at a dude's house, (laughs) you're done. Everything's getting spray painted. The house is burning down. It literally was like the movie Project X. I feel like in high school, I have to just share this, that my house was the party house because I had had an older brother. He was a senior when I was a freshman. And how organized was the cleanup? No, it was in, I mean, yeah, was, did I clean up? I mean, of course we had to, or I don't even know. I can't believe I'm so different than who I was. Like envisioning that a lesson. Yeah, you're in, you're in your thirties. You were a teenager (laughs) then. It's hard to like open up and be like, oh my God, this is who I was. But I was nuts. Every time my parents left, I would fill the back of my Nissan Murano with kegs at least two could fit back there and we would it was crazy like the parties you saw on TV were the parties we had at my house it was nuts I will never forget or my parents house let's be real when the party was at a girl's house right and the girl was a classy girl they would always have the girls that weren't that drunk they're just nursing a few beers clean up everything so that it was really fascinating. That's really nice. This one girl named Kelsey, they were like looking out for everybody and they would like clean up and have oh, like the garbage well. can. But then you you go to Eric R's house. I'm not going to say his last name, but I know a lot of kids from high school are currently listening to what I'm doing because I didn't go to my 10 year anniversary because I never want to see them again. So I'm cool with never seeing them again. Like it was like two weeks ago and everyone's viewing my LinkedIn and I see all these listens from my hometown. Hi, good to know you. That was in the past. But there was a dude named Eric R. And R is the first letter of his last name. We got it. And his, pu- yes, yes. That was very worth explaining. And his house was right next door to downtown of the suburb I lived in. And because it was right next door to the downtown part of the suburb I lived in, that means the police department was also in that downtown part. So it's a little quaint town, like a suburb of Chicago. And oh my God, Eric just thought that nobody was going to hear his house being right next door to one of the biggest libraries of all time. We had like the 10th biggest library in our hometown. What I'm saying is he was a very populated area. And then he's playing EDM music. I would play some of it, but I don't want to get in trouble for copyright. But just think about 2011 EDM. You keep talking about EDM. And that was so before the party era of like what I was listening to at house parties. Like we were, EDM wasn't even a thing until I was in college. But there's our age gap right there, right? But it's not that far. At least I wasn't born in the year 2000. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you can appreciate that I'm not that young. Because I'm like probably the last graduation class to not have social media. Because I graduated, it's going to make you feel old. I graduated in 2012. What? 13- from high school? Yeah. Oh my God. That's when I graduated from college. Okay, so there but, we are. But that's, not, but that's not that bad of, 
And that's but the, the EDM difference. But okay. The got EDM it. difference is there. Yeah. But it wasn't until like 2015 that Facebook Live came out. Right. So 93 babies, there's like that, there's like, we saw everything happen. I think happen. kids must be better now because I kid you not, like I know older adults with like teenage children. I haven't heard of anything. I haven't seen Because number one, ring cameras shut down everything. Oh Nothing's my. going past the ring camera. Damn. And number two, the boomers partied. But they didn't party as hard because they were having kids at 22. And we had everything perfectly. We're the baby boomers. And they had everything made for them, which they ruined for us and will die and get to live a perfect life and then die. Thank you, guys. But they literally didn't know how crazy we were. Now the millennials that are having kids, mm. we were just, it seems like two days ago, we were their age. So we remember very clearly how crazy we were and we see the signs. So if your son comes home oh my and he's like facing the wall and he doesn't want to look you in the eyes so that you don't smell the uh, beer on his breath, like those little signs, my mom and dad, they knew I was drinking, but I was able to convince them I wasn't. Wow. But no, now we you. see it. So like in hopefully your kids don't do it, but I would be in the years out. they do. Yeah. In 12 to 13 years, they're not going to even want to go out to drink. They're going to be in the metaverse, like doing chugs. Oh my gosh. What will it be like when my children <laughs> are ready to go out? I don't know. I'm terrified. I am terrified thinking about them going out and being even an ounce of what I was because I was pretty wild. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. This is being brought to you by the best printing company in all the Bay Area, westchaseprinting.com. I got my business cards that I've been passing out. I got them from there. They're great. Also, this is being brought to you by zradiolive.com. We are heard every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central at zradiolive.com. Z Radio Live on Odyssey and TuneIn. Go to ryanhoppyradio.com. We have a complete new logo from Munchie, a.k.a. Brian Donovan from iHeartMedia. I feel you. more legitimate. It's like a new era. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brian. That's so nice of you. It's very nice of him. I know he's listening to this. He's a fascinating cat, man. We'll get, we're going to get him on the show soon. We, we got to get him on. You know what's funny? He's a radio dude, but he has class. That's rare. <laughs> To say a radio dude having class being rare, That's you're not even using the word rare right. To say that there's that many in radio that have class, come on now. Happy hour. Happy hour. I mean, it's rare. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. All right. Enough about our crazy past. Man, I had one more story though. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. You no, 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 no. You don't just say that you have another. No. Go on. Okay, real quick, real quick. We had a trampoline in our backyard. This is like when we had. Everyone had a trampoline back then. Yeah, so we decided to move it close to the pool and we were jumping from the trampoline into the pool, which sounds easy and for some reason it wasn't. I did a flip and ended up knocking my chin with my knee and split my chin we have a chin bone people split it right open in half that was a story were you drunk well i wasn't sober <laughs> so 2013 Wait, are, oh i thought you were aging me again uh, no <laughs> i i did i was Continue. 19 in 2013 so <laughs> there you go well, i was walking home really drunk like no 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 not not <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad my dad's dead. Uh, literally, um. walking home, drunk. Not drunk, drunk. Stumbling. Not even that. It's like the classiness of radio being rare. It wasn't even drunk. It was... Dr I, I, it wasn't even the word drunk. It was so tipsy out of my mind that when I was walking home on the sidewalk, I was 19 years old, I slipped on the black ice that just blended with the sidewalk so you didn't see it. Yep. And I just decided I fell on the snow in front of me and then I slipped and you see my little chipped tooth? 
Yep. My chipped tooth is from the night in like February 2013 when I was like close to blackout drunk. Ryan. And I was bloody. So I cleaned. I went inside my house, cleaned it up. Cleaned my chipped tooth. Yes. And then I I was afraid to like sleep in my bed because then my dad would notice. So then I had the car in the driveway and I slept in my car and then my mom the next morning asked what happened and I was like, oh, I went jogging this morning and slipped and my dad's like, you don't jog? You don't jog. <laughs> oh my gosh. This um, reminds me, you said black ice. This reminds me of horror stores, stories, horror holiday stories. And I have one for you. Tell me. Here it is. Right now, people, if you are listening, I want you to think of your deepest, worst horror, not whore, horror, can't say that word, (laughs) holiday (laughs) stories. Here's mine. So I was in North Carolina uh, with my high school boyfriend at the time, and our families were up there in the mountains. We were about to celebrate New Year's Eve, and lo and behold, uh, my boyfriend, boyfriend at the time left me in North Carolina. Yeah, it was really sad and I cried and here I am. Okay, so here's what happened. Black ice. So then the day we're supposed to leave for the ra- sad music, Ryan, yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> so the day we're supposed to leave for the airport, it's just me and his stepdad driving back to the airport. Because that sounds fun. Because my ex decided to dr- uh, fly back to Florida soon and party with all of my friends. What a catch. Yeah. So that's me, my luck with um, with men. Um, anywho, so I'm driving back. I'm driving the vehicle because his... Um, Stepdad doesn't feel comfortable driving down the mountain at three in the morning when it's pitch black. We hit black ice. Our car spins off of the mountain and lo and behold, trees catch our car. I thought I was going to the airport. So I wore my senior hoodie and some moccasin slippers that were popular. Shout out Hollister. And then I had to climb out of the car sideways and for... Two and a half hours, I was standing in the freezing cold in my hoodie in the mountains of North Carolina, waiting for someone to save us with no cell phone reception. What's that, the conversation like? <laughs> that's that's my, like, I, I was losing so much body heat that I wanted to cuddle with his stepdad just for this. We were out there so long. I was just like, oh my God, someone hold me. And that never happened. It was so awkward. And then on top of it, my boyfriend was a jerk and that was my New Year's. So I want to know about your horror can you say horror for me so I can practice? Horror. What, again? Horror. Horror. I can't say the word, horror. people. Send us your stories because I want to hear them. What's the conversation like before the crash? Like, was there any conversation? Okay, okay. So <laughs> as we're going down the mountain, I hit the black ice and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm losing control of the steering wheel. Yeah. And he's like, pump your brakes. So I'm pumping the brakes, hoping to get traction on the road. It didn't happen. And we slid. Imagine like a curve of a mountain going downhill. As we're trying to curve and turn to go to continue going down, we just whoop right off the side. It was a wreck. And then we waited in the cold for someone two and a half hour hours later to come save us. And I was frozen, but at least we didn't die. Right. That That's a positive. I'm sorry if anyone had that experience. I'm trying to think of any I had that. Terrible holiday stories. I've got tons coming. I mean, I have awful things that have happened in my life, but usually my Christmas is pretty good. You know what I mean? Like I can think of awful things that have happened. How nice for you. How nice for you, Ryan. It is pretty nice. (laughs) Happy Hot Topic. Oh yeah, America. Morning. The major announcement from President Biden after 294 days in a Russian prison, Brittany Griner has been freed. Listen, I don't think she should spend nine years there, but she's also a complete dummy who should not have brought the uh, vape pen with her. Because if you get an arrest with a vape pen, you are the, just the dumbest person ever. You get caught with a vape pen in public, what the hell are you doing? Wait, hold on a second. You just told me... <laughs> <laughs> News that the country and Britney's wife, Sherelle, have been waiting a long time for. Sherelle and Britney have spoken to the president. These negotiations happening with the backdrop of Putin's war in Ukraine intensifying. We're going to go straight to our chief White House correspondent, Cecilia Vega. Good morning, Cecilia. 
George, good morning to you. We just got breaking news here from senior officials in this administration. So let me tell you what I know. This all came together within the last 48 hours. Brittany Griner was moved out of that penal colony into Moscow as these negotiations tightened. She was transferred from Moscow today to the UAE. She is currently, as we speak, en route to the United States. You saw the president speaking with Griner earlier this morning with her wife, Sherelle, here in the Oval Office. That phone call took place. Oh, I'm sure that was a riveting conversation. I don't vote for for either, for either side, so I don't really care. I despise Biden, despise Trump, but I can only imagine that conversation of Britney, who has been in prison for 10 years in Russia, then our dementia patient of a president, like, you're free. I didn't even get the other guy out, and we got an arms dealer. That was the trade. Right. We gave up an arms dealer. Okay, let's talk about what did we think. Was that a good deal? Good deal or no deal? And by the way, just for the record, we have some hypocrites on the show, and it's not me, but let's continue. Okay, how am I a hypocrite? Well, uh, what did she get in trouble for? I was. I, I told you not to talk about that. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's why we got screwed. We got screwed because there's another guy that needs to be freed. Now, if we would have got him and Brittany Griner freed, then you're going, okay, I get giving up a murderer arms dealer whatever how, no big deal but then you leave the other guy hanging right. you idiot how hard was this negotiation that they wouldn't let the other guy go though russia plays hard russia plays hard and, and what you, i'm yeah, what i'm gone. most curious about is i want to hear about her experience i want to know when that news comes out about you'll hear about it on uh like let's say oprah next week like, i need to tell know. tell interview it sucked i shouldn't have brought the vape pen do you I, think they were good to her knowing that there was uh, she was in the spotlight and I, there was pressure to return so her? So there's reports everywhere. I saw one report and I read it on the Pat and Aaron show a few weeks ago that she was dealing with like racism and like really awful things in her prison after she was found guilty. Damn. Here's the thing. She spent the right amount of time. Like the 10 months is like, why are you bringing a vape pen to Russia? You know what I mean? But do people accidentally travel with their things? Because in high school... She had a lot on her. Oh, she had a lot. Okay, just kidding. Never mind. I saw the best comment. Usually whenever it's anything about the WNBA, you have the small D overcompensating jealous men to come. That woman should get in the kitchen. Even though that woman's more athletic and richer than you'll ever be. Oh, women shouldn't play basketball. All those annoying comments on ESPN. I did see a lot of funny comments, though. It said that's the biggest trade in the WNBA. <laughs> I thought that was, that was pretty funny. That is kind of funny. And wow. Yeah, I guess if you are in the WNBA, you would be a little bit more careful about how you're traveling and like the persona. Well, it's you know? also, and I, I don't care if people kneel or not. I don't care. Whatever somebody wants to identify as, as long as you're not hurting animals or kids, I, I don't care. I don't have any phobia or racism in my heart. I don't care. I only care about myself. I don't care what you do. But when I say this, I'm speaking for other people that don't like Britney. So when I say this, this is not the opinions of Ryan Hoppy. This is just what I've seen working in radio. She was kneeling mm. for Black Lives Matters. So all the people that are patriotic with their profile picture of them looking patriotic with their dark shade, they're, they're like, she doesn't care about America, don't release her. So there were a lot of people that were mad this morning on Facebook uh, that she was released. And it's like- Nothing, it, like, a, nothing like a guy holding a dead deer <laughs> with his camo on to give you his dang opinion. No, literally that's that type. Or they take like their midlife crisis selfie and they're like, oh, I'm on my way to my ninth job interview. And it's everybody else's fault that I'm not getting hired. And I feel bad for her. Luck. I mean, I wouldn't have wanted to be in jail, but was that a good trade for an no, arms if dealer? No, we got the other guy, yeah, fine, whatever. Tell you me get about it done. the other guy. What do we know about him? He did something. I don't know. I didn't look that much into it, but I just saw everybody said that we left the other person out. Mm. And he's been over there for a few years. It's sad. How does that make him feel that your president doesn't even care? I mean, also, I don't really think our president knows that he's even a president, so I'm not expecting much from him. But, like, I thought this team was supposed to take over the world. What do I mean by this? I'll say this. Whatever her name is, Kamala Kamala, why was she not on the front lines? It's a woman of color. 
And it's a woman. She's both of those things. She should have been on TV every day saying, we need to get Britney freed. I've seen her do nothing. I'm not trying to get that political, but I'm just being real. Like everybody worships, but worships here's the thing politicians. Too, and this might be a little controversial, but why are we working so hard to free this person when there's so much other important stuff? Like she was guilty, right? I will, but I will say- and it was out of spite that Russia locked her up, in my opinion. I think oh, it was like- Totally. Also, this took a while though. Trump literally was going to do a world war if we didn't release ASAP Rocky four years ago. There's all these rumors that he was going to begin a world war for ASAP Rocky. So that's the one thing you can never take away from Trump. I just hate that it's people of privilege. How many people in yes. the United States right now yes. are inca incarcerated over stupid, petty, weed, like things like this? Like this, like this is just stupid to me. It really is. Do, 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 do. But no, for real, I think there's so many. I mean, yay to Kim Kardashian for trying to get people off of uh, parole. 856, I don't care anymore. 49 Hoppy. Yeah, if you think a politician cares about you, <laughs> somebody who thinks a politician cares about them also goes to a gentleman's club and is like, I'm going to meet my wife tonight. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment's been brought to you by the best MMA trainer in all of the Bay Area, Amir Academy of Martial Arts. He's got women's self-defense classes, kids classes. If you want to be an MMA fighter, go for it. He's got classes for that. If you're just looking for a workout, that's fine, too. You go to amiracademy.com, and you sign up. And when you go there and tell him I sent you, he's going to hook you up with a great deal. This is also being brought to you by my other friend who's a workout trainer, FitSageFitness.net. Devin Prasad is a sage. He's a life coach. And he's not one of those smarmy life coaches where you're like, oh, my God, get away from me, Gary Vee. No, 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 no. He's actually really good. For all the info, FitSageFitness.net and AmirAcademy.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Why does the FBI have to ruin everything? Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Why? Why, FBI? Why? The warning from the FBI about what it says are the potential national security dangers of TikTok. FBI Director Chris Wray says the app could be used by China for espionage and could be... <laughs> are you on TikTok? I should be. Nope. It's okay. It's just... When you look up something earlier in the day, it'll show up later on in the day. So if you're like dealing with a breakup or trying to fix a broken, let's say, trying to fix a, like, let's say, flat tire or your cat's throwing up, whatever you looked up on Google, any of those examples, those are, one was a personal example, first one, <laughs> uh, but the other ones. Literally, you'll see things on TikTok about it for days. Yeah. So if you're going through a heartbreak and you're like, ah, oh, to get over a heartbreak, TikTok at 11 o'clock at night, it's like, remember that heartbreak you went through? Yeah, it's it's the worst. I was getting weird uh, ads from Audible. I'm a big Audible listener. What do you listen to on Audible? Oh my God, so many books. <laughs> you would be on Audible. Oh my gosh, yeah. I, lo I live for Audible, but I was getting some ads about like, book suggestions and I was like it was like how to be a better parent and I was like oh my gosh they're like their algorithm just targeted me they're listening and called me <laughs> out dang that's hard manipulated to control content ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with more good morning Ike 
Good morning, Janae. FBI Director Christopher Wray is particularly concerned with what the Chinese government can do with the data it collects from the millions of TikTok users right here in the U.S. Now, TikTok is owned by Beijing-based company ByteDance. And on Friday, Wray explicitly warned that control of the app is in the hands of the Chinese government that doesn't share our values. Millennials had slutty behavior at underage drinking parties. Gen Z gave up all their info to China. Ray says the Chinese have the ability to control TikTok's recommendation algorithm, which he says allows them to manipulate content and possibly use it for influence operations. <laughs> we already knew this. We already knew this. It's so weird, too, because when you're on the app, you know it's bad for you, and then you're like, I'm just giving up my info. It's a weird feeling. I it's can't explain like, it. It's things like this that make me sad. It, it makes me sad. I got rid of TikTok because... It's just the algorithm was showing me things I don't want to see. Right. And social dilemma. You and I chatted about this the yeah. other day. If you haven't seen it, go look it up on Netflix. Hopefully it's still there. Social dilemma. When that came out a couple of years ago, I literally deleted all of my social media accounts because you have the big wigs. You have the higher ups of these major social media platforms coming forward in a docu-series called Social Dilemma, where they openly talk about the algorithms and how the algorithms can actually sense if you're lonely, if you're sad, if you've had a good day. That's how in tuned their A I systems are right now. They wouldn't even let their own children use them. And it freaked me out. You go, go watch the show. Social dilemma. The acting in it was horrendous. So they're like, was it act? Was it acting? Yeah. No, it was a docu-series. I mean, it was a like documentary. It was a 90 minute documentary. They had the actors oh, portraying yeah. what it would be like. I watched <laughs> it and it was like two years ago going into 2021. Cause I spent all of 2020 on social media. I How remember- did you feel after? It's like, I'm going to be a different person. And two years later, my social media usage is worse. It didn't, I'm an addict. It's my cigarettes. I think it's just our society, everybody. But I'm not even going to say it. When I lived in Spain, people are just not into it. Like, it's not a thing. Like, you think they're sitting around the tables. No, they're enjoying their sangria, actually having decent conversations. The world needs to change. You know who had a very unique conversation is these two. Along and Ime Udoka are going their separate ways. E.T. confirms the couple have officially split following months of speculation about their relationship status. He's a coach in the NBA. How do you guys work everything out? A lot of patience. Nia and Ime were together for 13 years and they share 11 year old son Kez. And the news comes as they navigate the fallout of the NBA coach's cheating scandal. Back in September, their relationship was thrown into the spotlight. The investigation had some twists and turns and took some time to develop all the facts. Ime was accused of engaging in a consensual relationship with a female member of the Boston Celtics staff, breaking the franchise's code of conduct. We will make a determination at a later time uh, about Ime's future uh, with us. Glad it came from an organization that has never been surrounded with potential of any racism because every other professional sports league and organization and team, they do things by the box. It's only the Celtics that was slutty. Right. I'm not defending Isn't him. Isn't this the culture? Like, so sadly, here we go again with all the sad things about the United States, in my opinion. I'm a Debbie Downer today. There we go. I just said it Me for too. the record. But yeah, I think, unfortunately, this is the culture of sports um, where people cheat. And he slept around and then got fired for it. But what's the difference? He slept with some very important people's wives, allegedly. Oh, is, is that it? Yeah. In the end, he was suspended for the entire season. Ime offered a public apology. Quote, I am sorry for putting the team in this difficult situation, and I accept the team's decision. You oh, weren't I, I'm sorry when I'm, you were uh, yeah. on top of her. <laughs> you weren't like, oh no, I'm hurting the Celtics. You were sorry he you got caught. <laughs> It, quote, I want to apologize to our players, fans, the entire Celtics organization, and my family for letting them down. 
And I think we have to ask ourselves, are we a part of the problem or are we a part of the solution? And Nia... That was his wife two years ago. Good for his wife, though, for leaving him. Honestly, good for her. Do you think she finally found out or do you think she was like... Oh, women always know. She speculated for years, probably. There's so many red flags. And woman's intuition does not lie. My stomach tells me everything. I know the second something's going down. She broke her silence by sharing this cryptic clip to Instagram. It's her walking through the woods. And it says, no one thing, that light that you see. As that light that you see, Uh you know, you see the happiness. But understand one thing. What's uh, going on? About that light that they got. They had to go into the darkness to get it. Oh, nothing like a post from somebody that got cheated on. It's really cryptic and kind of makes no sense. I'm not saying she shouldn't make the post, but a lot of times, like famous celebrities, when they get cheated on, they put up these cryptic posts. It's like... You know what I can't stand? What? Kevin Hart. I'm sorry. And like yeah, all the cheaters, Nick Cannon on his 15th baby. I don't even oh, know. I'm sure those kids get equal attention. The fact that he needs some sleep and then he wakes up and works out and no. does like five talk shows it's and he's got life. six different moms and he's in Los Angeles that has traffic and it takes a while. I'm sure all 15 kids, they all get equal attention. But what's funny is like all these men come to social media now to apologize, Adam Levine most recently. And it's like, ew, oh my God, stop. Are you kidding me? Like you just got caught, dude. You did not care. Let's be honest. Your PR team wrote your statement and you don't give a blank. And you should probably get checked for an STD. Let's be real. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy Hour will be right back. Oh, we're about to come back and wrap up everything, which uh, they should be doing, hopefully. But this following segment has been brought to you by the best podcast network in all of the Bay Area and the world, quadpod.com, Q-O-D, P-O-D.com, slash Ryan Hoppy. And uh, I like wrapping up my show with a one-liner, so when we come back, we'll end it with a funny one-liner. So this is our quick plugs. Where can people find you? Alessia underscore Calandra on Instagram and Facebook. Wait, so it's Calandra? Yes. I it said could be Cal- Calandra because I don't think in Italy they're like Calandra. No, that's like Calan. Plus, if I say Calandra, then my Midwest accent really comes out with yeah, my A's. No, it's Calandra, but for some reason we say Calandra. Could I get a salad with Calandra? We've been Americanized. And no I've been can, Chicagoized, even worse. My daughter literally said to me today, how come no one can say your name, mommy? Doesn't that annoy you? And I realized that my whole life I've been called Alicia or Alicia or some variation of Alyssa. And I thought, wow, has this affected me for 32 years knowing that no one could pronounce my name? And it has. Well, I have the most 1993 name of all time, Ryan. Everybody in the early 90s is named Ryan. That's true. Just like all the Levi's of today. Oh, yeah, totally. Or uh, what's the character from, uh, not Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones? Oh, my God. Alicia? Is it? I no, think it's so. Khaleesia. Yeah, that's what it is. Khaleesi, but yeah. But there is Alessia Cara now who had the hit single on Moana, if you've yeah. seen the Disney movie. And I think she's had- Have you seen that like a thousand times with your kids oh watching God, it on I, repeat? I live for that movie and I love a good Coco movie. I like cry every time. I want to know also, like tweet Ryan and tell us what movies you cry in the most. At like, Ryan Happy Radio on all social, Snapchat, IG. Uh, Twitter, Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com, 856-49 Hoppy. Message us on the talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app. We're also on Spreaker, TuneIn. Let me get the whole list. Odyssey, Apple, Spotify. Spotify. Honestly, if you're not listening, you're missing out. Happy hour. Happy hour. He never holds back and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. 856 49 Hoppy. 856 494 6773. No reason to plug myself right now because I just did. 
What the hell? It is Friday Eve. If you're listening on the day, this was recorded December 8th, 2022. And if you're listening in 100 years, we've been dead for a while. And thank you for listening. On that bright note, what do you got going on? It's Friday Eve. It's so close to being Friday. What are you going to be doing? What if our future clones like restarted this show? They would probably... Not be as good as us. Yeah, true. Touche. Two what points. the hell you got going on in the weekend? What am I doing this weekend? Uh, I'm supposed to be going to a lightning game tonight. Yeah. If uh, my little one's doing How better. many lightning games do you go to? It's crazy. I love the lightning. And yeah. we have been season ticket holders. I have a lot of relatives that work for the Vinick group. And so we kind of get the hookup on tickets, which is super nice. And I just am a hockey fan. Yeah. For as much... I got to be careful when I say this, even though I don't care... Whatever the guy's name is that owns the Rays, it's not that he's awful. He's just cheap and not very good. Uh, for as average as the Rays ownership is, the Vinicks are on the complete opposite end. They are so elite and so classy. So classy. Like they are like Did you see the top co- notch. I don't know if you were at the game the other night. It was, um, was honor there. honoring Stamkos for his thousandth goal. And they brought him and presented him with like Tiffany crystals and like a gold hockey stick and two little gold hockey sticks for his boys. Oh my God, guys, hockey makes me cry. Going back to like things that make me cry. Like yeah. I am so moved when they were recapping all of his goals over the last like decade of him playing hockey. He was in the original lightning black Jersey. And I was like, Oh my God, it's been so long of Stamkos. And they showed his like first goal with the lightning, then his like 30th all the way to a thousand, not all of them, but you know, they jumped around, but it was just so touching. It was great. I love, I love the lightning. Yeah. Have you been to the Chase Club? Yes. It's like my favorite place on earth. There's nowhere better than the Chase Club at the Emily. The food is so good. It's so the, good. It they is put so in good. so much Jack and that Jack and Coke. Some places will put in a drip and most of it is Coke. They hook you up on the Jack and Coke when you go to the Chase Club. That's true. And if you're not in the Chase Club and you get Jack and Coke, prepare to spend like 30 bucks on your drink. But that's okay. Inflation. Whenever I've gone... I was going with a radio show, so I wasn't paying the bill. Happy hour. Happy hour. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over.